Hey, it's Oxdale, Luke here, and in today's video, we're taking a look at this. This is the Atoto P9. And whilst I've looked at many CarPlay screens and Android Auto screens so far on this channel, this one is quite unique to all the other ones I've looked at because this one is hardwired. And because of that, it does come with a number of advantages and disadvantages, depending on which side of the fence you're going to be sitting on. Now, most of the screens, or all the screens I've looked at so far, are typically portable screens. They can be disconnected from the car in about 30 seconds, and most of the time installed in a new car just as easily. This one's different. This one's wired in much more like a car's radio. It's hardwired, and it's not meant to really be removed uh, once it's in the car, unless really you're changing your car to something else, and you've got an hour or two to actually unwire everything. Now, the difference is, is because this one's hardwired, it's designed to have like an almost boot up instantaneous time. Instantaneous boot up time. And uh, because it's gonna actually wire itself more like a car radio, it's gonna have a permanent live and ignition live. And essentially when you take the ignition out, so you take your key out, there's still gonna be power going to the screen, leaving it in a state of deep sleep rather than turning it off completely. Now that's kind of an interesting proposition for me because this is also running Android. And what I found in the past from some of the tests with the Android head unit I looked at, the Podofo, was that it was very, very slow at booting up because it had to boot up from a cold start. And Android is much heavier than the Linux-based systems that most of the screens use. But if you can have the functionality of Android with a quick boot up, then maybe it's going to be a good proposition. On top of that, there is also some other things that I really need to add the screen. One of them is the camera setup. Now, most of these screens I've looked at have cameras that are built into the screen. And whilst that's great for simpleness, um, portability, compactness, all that kind of stuff, there is one issue, and that is that if you've got the screen on your dashboard and your dashboard's kind of steep going up, the dash cam might also clip the bottom of the dashboard. Like you might see the bottom of the dashboard in the screen and that's kind of annoying sometimes. So what would be better, and what this one does, is being able to take those cameras and mount them externally rather than on the screen itself. So this can come with a kit that has a front and a back camera. You can get with a kit or a front camera, just a back camera or no cameras. And if you get the kit with the front camera or the back camera, you can actually mount them higher up on the windscreen where you would traditionally put a ded dedicated dash cam. And then that just gets wired through with a wire, obviously to the screen itself. So. That's a very interesting prospect, which we'll be looking at a little bit later in this video. On top of that, another thing is, is that it's got a remote control. So it's kind of like a steering wheel remote. So you can either clip this around something, it's almost like a watch band, or you can actually take the remote off and stick it to part of the dashboard, your steering wheel, maybe the door card. From that, you can program some different functionality into it, like track skipping, ending, starting calls, even at, um, activating the digital assistance using the, using the remote control. So that, again, really nice, neat, unique feature I've not seen so far. Now, Toto is a company I've looked at and reviewed in the past. I think this is my fourth collaboration with them. And yeah, heads up, they've sent this out as a review sample free of charge. However, what I've noticed in the past is the Toto units I've looked at have generally been quite good. I've really liked them. Uh, I've used their little sub in the back of my Volvo still, really like that. And their Android head units I've been using my camper van for the last couple of weeks on a couple of extended trips. And it's been rock solid and I've really, really liked that. So when they've actually kind of took that technology from their head units, which I really like, and put them into the screen, that became a very interesting proposition that I really wanted to check out. Now, Actually, look around the screen, the design of it, there is lots of um, interesting points about this. Firstly, underneath, you've got a SIM card slot, so this can have its own data going to it if you want to. You've got a uh, an SD slot as well for expanding the storage. It's got microphone inputs as well as two USB type Cs on the back. One of these is for the camera, the other one is just for general USB. And they do offer some interesting accessories for this, such as a HDMI input. So if you want to, I don't know, stick a PlayStation on here or something, you absolutely could. And finally, there is this big one wire, which is a data and power transfer. So a lot of the wire gets hardwired in behind the dashboard for me to install. And you can put stuff like USB type A ports on here and everything, so they're not actually up there on the dashboard. Another feature I really like about this. Now let's talk about price on this screen. I'm just looking at my laptop here, and it starts in the UK at 299 pounds. That's without any cameras. If you want to add either a front or a rear camera, budget an extra £20 into that, so it's £319. 
And then the entire kit altogether, for some reasons, is actually more expensive. Um, that is coming in at £349. Now, today is Amazon Prime Day, so there is an extra 6% off this if you use the code that's in the description below. So check that out if you want. And like I said, this is sent to me as a review sample. These are affiliate links, but as always, this is my own thoughts and opinions on this product and not influenced anyway by the people who supply these products to me or by the affiliate links. That being said, I'm going to be putting this to the comprehensive tests that I give every single screen on the channel. So I'm going to be testing boot up times, doing an unboxing, I'm going to be testing a dash cam, audio quality, call quality, everything like that, and kind of scientifically putting them all together in a spreadsheet so you can see which screen is best for your needs. So without further ado, I know that was a long introduction, but there's a lot to say about the screen. So let's get into this and start off with the unboxing. Well, let's kick this off with an unboxing of the screen itself. And it's nice to see a Toto are very generous when it comes to the amount of accessories they provide with this screen. We've got manuals, a dashboard mount, four different types of connections for the book line, depending on how your fuse box is on the car. We've got a rear view camera, a front camera, a pad to stick on your dashboard for the suction mount to adhere to, all the wiring, a remote control, as well as all extra accessories like USB Type-C to Type-A connections and a microphone as well. Very, very nice. And a close-up of the screen itself reveals that there is a SIM card, an SD, and a microphone input at the bottom. And at the back, there is two USB Type-C ports, a light sensor, a speaker, and another cable that uh, delivers power and also data to it. Let's start off by talking about the power connection on this screen because it's different to any other CarPlay screen that I've looked at so far. It's much more like a car's radio. So if you look at the back here, we've just got the power connection, uh, which is a proprietary type of connection, and this is gonna have power and data going to it. The USB ports at the back, they're just used for the cameras and also data transfer. Now, when we look at the power cable on this, it's, it's a quite big, it's quite um, complicated. There's lots of stuff going on here. Ignore these two, I've added these in myself at the moment for just this test. But first we've got this end. This goes to the screen providing power and some data to it. As we follow this down, I've got to notice about halfway down this, we're gonna have a couple of extra ports on it, which is nice to see. I like this, we've got USB Type-A for data. We've also got 3.5 millimeter auxiliary output. Let's go a little bit further down this cable and you notice we're going to have a book line instead of the regular kind of power adapter that goes into the car's cigarette lighter. What this is, is a hardwired solution so that this has quick boots. It's always gonna boot up in a few seconds rather than booting from scratch. Now this being an Android based unit, that's something you definitely want because Android takes longer to boot up than these more simple Linux based ones. Because of this, you're going to notice that it has three cables going to the power. The black is your ground, and then you've got two lives going through this. So you're gonna accessory live, and a permanent life. Now, this is much more similar to a car's radio. And what this essentially means is, there's always one power cable going to it to keep power to the device, but then the second one is almost like a standby switch. So when you take your key out, it sends a signal to the device to say, hey, turn the screen off, but leave the cameras on, and basically just be ready to start up quickly when I need you in the, in the future. So I'm very interested to see how that's going to pan out. It's one of these uh, first things how this separates itself from any other screen I've seen so far. So I like that quite a lot. And once you get down to this bit here, this is what I've added into this. Typically what you're meant to do is use one of these in conjunction with them. These go into the car's fuse box, these connect into the power cable here, and we're able to source the ignition and permanent live. Now I'll leave a video right here if you want to check, uh, to find out how to find a permanent and ignition live on your car. Go and check that out if you want. Um, for this purpose, so I've connected the wires into two car power sockets, and I'm gonna be using this for the test to turn it on quickly. So I'm gonna demonstrate that in a second. So with that explained, let's get on to the boot up times. Let's just show me, now I just wanna show you quickly how I've got this wired up. So I've got the wires going into these two sockets here. 
Now, as you see, the one on the left here, this is going to be a permanent live. So this is going to have the ground and the permanent live going to this. And the second one is going to represent the accessory or switched live. So when I hit the switch on here, you're going to see that's going to boot up quite quickly. See? And essentially, I'm going to be using that method to test the boot up times rather than the cold boots because that's more what the real world scenario is, is using the switch live to boot this up. As usual, I'm going to boot this up 10 times, leaving a two minutes cool down in between each try. Reboot in in 12 and a half seconds, very impressive. Okay, so let's talk about the scores on the screen because I'll give you a heads up, it starts off very, very well, like really well, and then stumbles a little bit later on. So we'll get to that in a second, but I just want to give you a heads up in case you think that it's going to be just acing everything because it won't. However, starting off with the power scores, and that's something that is really, really good at. The boot up times are 13.35 seconds, and comparing that to the other Android screen I looked at, the Podofo, that had a time of 35.8. So this is three times quicker or 22 seconds faster to get to wireless CarPlay, which is just phenomenal. In fact, when this is hit wireless CarPlay and is boosted in, most of the screens that I've looked at are running on the, just boost them to the home screen. Um, this is actually the quickest screen I've looked at to get to wireless CarPlay out of anything, actually beating out the Car ABC from the last test, which had a time of 14 seconds. Now this does score maximum points in this test possible, 10 out of 10. However, there is one thing I'm a little bit concerned about, and that is that I wouldn't connect my iPhone 15 Pro, regardless of what I tried. I just could not get that to get into Apple CarPlay. It would work in terms of a normal Bluetooth connection. I could stream music to it. But I could not get into wireless CarPlay on my 15 Pro. Now my wife's 15 Pro Max, which is an identical phone, uh, bought on the same day, same capacity of storage, all that stuff, running the exact same version of iOS. That boots in, no problems whatsoever. So I don't know what the difference is between the two phones. It also had no problem connecting to this and iPhone SE second generation. It just seems to be something about my phone it doesn't like. And it did try resetting all the network settings on the screen and on my phone, and it still wouldn't work. The interesting thing is this is not the first time I've had this problem with an Atoto Android product. Now the screen that's in my camper van, the uh, Atoso head unit, the Android one, that also would not connect my iPhone when I first got the screen. Atoto provides me with a firmware update and that worked absolutely fine. And I will ask Atoto to give me a firmware update for this if it does exist and I will leave a comment in the section below if you want to check out whether that has helped the iPhone 15 connect to this screen. You may not have an issue going by my experience but it's worth bringing up just in order to be honest. Moving on to this screen, and again, the screen is very, very good on this. It's got a maximum brightness of 1,398 lux. That is by far the brightest screen I have looked at. My iPhone 15 only has a maximum brightness of 903, so just to give you an idea of how bright this screen is, it is the brightest screen I've looked at, even beating out the car ABC, which I thought was extremely bright in the last test. It suffices to say with excellent clarity, excellent responsiveness and auto brightness using a little sensor on the back, this again takes maximum points in the screen and also takes first place in these tests. Please make a U-turn where safe. Please proceed to highlighted route. Please make a U-turn where safe. Bing, bong, in 50 yards. Turn left. Hi, I'm Siri. 
Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Hi, I'm Siri. Choose the voice you'd like me to use. Moving on to audio, again, it's still a strong contender one here, but not quite the champion it has been in the last two categories. The internal speaker is the loudest out of any of them, with 84 decibels, beating out the Carpio Ride 72, but its clarity and fullness is nowhere near as good as the Carpio Ride's was. Again, we're probably only going to be using these speakers in an emergency situation, because let's face it, I doubt anyone's going to be hardwiring this screen into the car with you know all its different connectivity options, including FM transmitters and that type of stuff, and then end up using the built-in speaker. So it's not something I give too much weight to, but it also wasn't the strongest uh, one uh, out of the screens I've looked at. Moving on to other stuff though with um, audio, it's got Bluetooth, uh, it's actually got dual Bluetooth on this, so I'm gonna give a few extra points for that. So you can connect it to Bluetooth devices. You can also decide to whether to just keep the phone directly from, the audio directly from your phone to your head unit, or route it through this as well. So there's lots of different options of how you want to route the Bluetooth. And that is really, really good. It's got so much different stuff on there. And dual Bluetooth's great because it also allows you to keep something like a, an OBD scanner attached, as well as your phone attached at the same time as well. So uh, on that front, actually kind of just gets more of the maximum points on the Bluetooth side. It's got an auxiliary output, which is great, but doesn't seem to have a graphic equalizer built in. Um, on here though, yeah, generally a very good contender, just falls short a little bit with the speaker. I must also say that the FM transmitter was pretty poor as well. If you're unless you're right next to the actual screen itself, I wasn't getting a clear signal. As soon as I walked away, it definitely degraded quite fast. Call quality on these screens is an extremely important aspect. So to simulate this consistently, I've made a recording on my iPad and that's going to be outputted to my Bluetooth speaker up here. This is to simulate where the driver's head is and it's set at 50% volume, which is around the same volume someone would be speaking at. This is then going to be sent all the way through to the CarPlay screen where it's going to be received by the microphone on here. And this is going to make a call all the way through to my old iPhone SE which is then connected to my Sony voice recorder via an auxiliary cable. Hi there. Yeah, I'm just calling to do a test run, basically. So this recording is literally just for a testing audio unit called the big screen. That kind of thing. Uh, and what I'm going to do is simulate the way I'm talking when I'm actually driving in the car. So as you can hear, there's a bit of low point behind me as well. And my voice is a little bit raised as it would be when I'm trying to talk into a hands free system. So I'm going to be using this test throughout uh, every other screen and radio I use. And then hopefully that will give you a consistent result, especially if it's played at the same distance and the same volume any single time. Hello? Hi there. Yeah, I'm just calling to do a test run, basically. So this recording is literally just for a uh, testing audio units, CarPlay screen, that kind of thing. Uh, and what I want to do is simulate the way I'm talking when I'm actually driving in the car. So as you can hear, there's a bit of road noise behind me as well. And my voice is a little bit raised as it would be when I'm talking to a hands-free system. So I'm going to be using this test throughout uh, every other screen and radio I use. And then hopefully that will give you a consistent result, especially if it's played at the same distance and the same volume. Call quality is a little bit of a letdown, I would say, overall. The internal microphone is not very good. It's just got way too much noise suppression on there. Putting an external microphone on there actually did make it a lot better, but I still only give it a 3 out of 5 because there was just too much noise suppression. I surmise if I spoke a bit louder, maybe I shouted a little bit into the microphone, it might be good, but they really should be able to be doing a better job because the voice was not that quiet coming out of the speaker and it was a normal speaking voice. So I would like to see that revised in the future and it might be able to be fixed with a software update because it seems to be more software related than hardware.
Okay, let's talk about the design of the screen. Overall, it's a well-designed screen. Its build quality is very, very good. It's neat. The logos aren't too much in your face, so it looks quite nice when it's in the car. It's quite light. It's 539 grams, which is still kind of less, quite a bit less than the, uh, the car provides, which was a much smaller screen than this. Um, so yeah, not too heavy. And it's bezels to screen ratio, pretty good as well, as good as any other screen I've tested so far. Good connectivity, it's got the microphone inputs, it's got SIM cards, SD slots, um, all very, very good in that sense, including a right-hand drive mode as well, if you're using this kind of in the UK or Australia, or perhaps in Asia as well. Uh, on top of that, um, I also like the fact that it's got Android and the user interface is more configurable. So despite being decent out, out of the box, you can configure that a lot more to how you want with your own custom launches and your own icons if you really want to get into that kind of stuff and spend some time with it. But there is one thing on here that really, really lets it down. And honestly, it just, it bugs me because it's so simple and some companies just don't implement it. And that's a way to turn the LCD off. Um, the power button on the back does nothing. It actually alters the volume. And there's a swipe down to get a quick access menu kind of thing and you can alter stuff such as brightness and get to some of the settings you can't turn the lcd off and what i specifically mean from that is i want to be able to push a button or just a couple of swipes turn the lcd off when maybe i'm driving at night time but audio still plays and the cameras still work but the screen just gets reactivated by tap of the lcd and this doesn't have it and honestly it's a big oversight not to have that because it's a big screen you might want to turn it off if you're not looking at it Please update that with a new software update because that would make such a difference to how good this screen feels when it's in the car. So please, please do a firm update that allows the screen to be turned off as well with a couple of swipes. Moving on to the dash cam test. And this unfortunately was where it really fell short. And it's a real shame because this is the thing I was most excited about for those external dash cams. No, unfortunately, um, when it comes to the front camera, it's only a 1080p camera, which in itself is not bad. 1080p can have a very good image still, um, but I had to the number plate became unreadable at 27 feet, which is the worst I've reviewed so far alongside the Podofo. Now, just in comparison to something like the Enon or the Lamto, which I'm using in my car at the moment, that went to 45 feet, so it's much, much better. So. I only got the front at two out of five stars. And when it came to the rear dash cam, it wouldn't record. Now the dash cam works. I can guess signal clicking the rear camera button through the apps, but it doesn't record to the SD card. And I've looked to all the different options I can find, but there's no way that the rear camera seems to record the video to the SD card. So it seems to be more like a backup camera rather than a rear dash cam. Again, it seems to be software related. So Toto, if you can fix that, I will give this another review in the future because I do really want to see that work into its fullest potential. Also, it doesn't include an SD card at the price point and maybe a 64 gig would be nice to see for the price of the screen as well. Okay, so final thoughts and feedback on this screen. Well, firstly, the scores are phenomenal. Overall, it's the highest scoring screen that I've looked at by a decent margin. I mean, I'm guessing out of here like uh, 49 points, which has beaten out the uh, what the high, second highest one, which is the Car ABC from the last uh, test of 45. And that was a very high quality screen. Uh, in terms of value, it's relatively decent as well, despite its high price. Um, so definitely the cost is justified on the screen, I would say. Even without the dash cam taken into account, it's a very good screen uh, overall. And I think if you are going in with those expectations, you'll probably be very happy with it. Of course, there are a couple of annoying features about it which really could be sold with a good software update. Um, and I hope they do. That is just making sure that it seems to connect better to phones. Like for some reason, the iPhone 15 not connecting to it is a weird thing when the 15 Pro Max does. So not quite sure why that's happening. Also, if they can make that audio quality a bit better for the uh, phone calls, that would also be very much appreciated because it seems to be software related. Just turn down that noise suppression. It's best to have a bit more background noise 
but then also still be able to hear the person talking on the other end rather than cutting everything out. So I hope they can fix that. And then finally, it's just the dash cam, which really was a letdown. And again, there might be hope for that because the dash cam's external. You might be able to stick a different camera into this and get much better results. Or maybe the software can be tweaked to allow better processing of the camera feed. Who knows? If you can get them stuff sorted out, this screen might be pretty much untouchable. So as you can see, I really like this screen. It's great, could be a little bit better with just a little bit of tweaks. So like I said, check out in the description below if you wanna pick one up for yourself. Again, there is a 6% discount at the moment for Amazon Prime Day. Uh, but until then, thank you all for watching if you made it this far. I know it's been a long test, but hopefully it's given you some decent conclusions if you're thinking of buying one for yourself. So until next time, thank you all for watching. See you soon, and as always, take care.